Hello, this is the Green Corn Rebellion Show. I'm Gregory Hardin II. Today, I am here with one of my favorite state representatives here in Oklahoma, Jacob Rosecrantz from House District 46 out in Norman and Noble. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and start with all the questions. So, where did you originally grow up at? Well, um, <clears throat> I was born here in Norman, uh, and then parents got divorced, and I moved to Colorado for about, oh, like, till about fifth grade, and then moved to California, and then moved back to Norman, and then moved to Shawnee, and then moved to Oklahoma City, and then moved back to Norman. And I've been to Norman since mm, freshman year. Okay, cool. When did you live in Shawnee? Hmm? So when did you live in Shawnee? Oh, well, I don't know the year, but I think it was like, um, that had to have been fifth grade, somewhere around there. So I lived right behind St. Uh, Benedict's Church off D D Dewey or something like that. Okay. All right, cool. That's cool. All right. Um... What made you want to become a teacher? Well, <clears throat> I was a difficult student. Um, kind of thought I knew everything. And my teachers didn't really, you know, they, they, if they didn't have the time and, and, and heart to try to help me, then I don't think I ever would have really gone too far. And so right then, right, right then, during, during schools, uh, and, you know, high school mostly, um, I saw how hard they were working, you know, people like Claudia Swisher and Mrs. Brown, remember all the different ones um, that really just gave their all to me. And it made me want to do the same thing. And especially once I found my niche, which was uh, history, I really wanted to be a teacher of history. So that's how that all started. All right, cool. Um, so what made you want to run for office? Um, I became a teacher. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm not kidding. Um, it took me a while. It was before the, the teacher uh, shortage. Um, I wanted to be a professor at first, not a teacher, not a high school or, or middle school teacher. And I had an influential professor named Dr. Fears who was like, okay, no, 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 no. Your energy, you need to be in school with children. You don't need to be at college doing research. And, and he was right. <laughs> so he uh, kind of changed my path but I, I had my first born Isabella that same year and so I didn't go the traditional route I went alternative route and couldn't find a job so I started as a uh, <clears throat> I started as a I teach a, 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 a paraprofessional and then I kind of went and did a whole bunch of that other stuff so when I finally got to uh, to teach I was like okay what's common core this is awful why are we doing all these tests what is this I didn't grow up this way. This is disgusting. Um, my kids, I taught in Southside Oklahoma City. That some of them couldn't even speak English that well. We expected them to pass all these tests. And I, I just, I rebelled. As soon as I became a teacher, I just flat out rebelled. Um, and started looking around and, and, and became more of an activist. Uh, started finding out that this was all federal. The test would put it down upon us. Um, uh, and then I was like, well, what can we do at the state level to at least, you know, fund our schools correctly? Because we were just obviously not funding them correctly. Teachers didn't get paid crap. I didn't get paid crap when I became a teacher. I made more as a, as a waiter at Saltgrass Steakhouse than I did as a teacher my first year. So all these things led me to, and plus as an activist, I knew what vouchers were and those types of things. Mm -hmm. I learned all this. And I was like, okay, well, our state looks like they like these things. So I was going to help whoever was out here and that was public education and it wasn't i mean scott martin was and i wasn't going to run against him but my my senator was not uh standards at the time and he still is but <clears throat> so i decided to run against him didn't stick with that backed out of it in 2016 and then ran against scott martin because he was going to term out in 2018 that was it that was my whole game plan to try to get a teacher at a higher level so i could have these conversations with the lawmakers instead of at, in a rally or you know a protest or something like that all right cool uh so how did you feel about the teacher strike last year well 
it's so sad that it was needed. I mean, you'll hear that from everybody. But yeah. to me, to me, it was was amazing because I was so happy to see that teachers were standing up. Um, something I had noticed even when I was a teacher is that we just kind of just took things like this. We'll, we'll do it for the kids. We'll do it for the kids. Mm -hmm. And that's the way it was. Um, at that point, it, they had had enough. And also the greatest part about it was that they got to see what all was happening at the Capitol, the sausage being made. No one really knows. And once they got up there, they were like, God, really? The voices are being shut down. And uh, there's also these other ideas that could, could work out for us. And we're not even hearing these, these ideas and all this. And it was a real big uh, wake up call. The only problem is that it didn't last long enough. Um, it didn't, uh, it, they, they let them, the teachers had nothing to do with this, but the politicians saw it coming and tried to pass the teacher pay raise fast. And um, they, they got it passed. So give it up to the, the threat of the walkout. But after that, there was really no goal um, except to really think to stay and to get something done at that point, you have to dig in your heels and it didn't last long enough. So to me, it was, it was a great wake up call to mm -hmm. the legislators, but then in 2018, the elections, it, it didn't reflect that too much. Yeah. So we were just kind of <laughs> like, uh, okay, it, it did in the Republican primaries. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Anybody who voted against that thing uh, got, got booted. So, yeah. so yes, people were riled up, but by the time the general came out, it didn't reflect. So it was weird. Yeah. Okay. So how did you feel about the past session this year at the Capitol? Uh, could you give me a rundown of what the budget was and whatnot and how you felt about it? Yeah, um, not so much the budget. The budget has, has – that's, that's decided pretty much by the governor. When the governor took yeah. over, he's a CEO, and he is doing exactly what he's elected to do. He is being a CEO, for good or for bad. He, uh, the, 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 the stuff that passed last year empowered that guy – to all extents. I and mean, it will empower any governor going down the road, too. That's why some more conservative members were like, whoa, 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 we're doing too much here. But that passed. And so, you know, he has hiring and firing powers over the agency, stuff like that. Um, I think you're going to see uh, this year, it's going to be a lot less, you know, la di da -di, hand in hand with the governor and all that. But so last year was very frustrating to me because um, it, things were not finished in 2018. Mm -hmm. And a lot of this, uh, a lot of my frustration, I'm a man of action. A lot of my frustration at the Capitol is uh, lip service. Like, oh, here, we passed this bill. And then you look in the guts of the bill. You're like, that bill didn't do jack. Yeah. That's just like, that's just like something you're saying, like, high five, we're done. Like the teacher pay raise for 1200 bucks. No one's going to turn that down. But that's a slap in the face. Yes, mm -hmm. it's on top of the other teacher pay raise. Yeah. But that's just to get people to shut up, if you ask me. And mm -hmm. so I was trying to push for more and all this, but we still have voices that aren't really heard. But my big thing, too, is to make uh, friends across the aisle with the 46 new Republicans that got elected. That's a lot at yeah. one time. And, and I did. And that's how I got Lauren's Law. If you remember, it was a consent and healthy relationship mm -hmm. education. Yeah. Law. I got that on the floor for a hearing. You can't do that if, unless you have 51 Republican votes. That's just the way it is. So you have to work real hard. And mm -hmm. for it to get on the floor and then die the way it did, yeah very frustrating frustrating year but um that's that's the best way i can put it most of the stuff that passed last year it, it didn't do much and so we have so much work to do still and uh, my 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 bills are going to reflect that uh, my caucus's bills are going to reflect that i know a lot of the, the uh, allies across the aisles bills will reflect that we'll just see i think the house has gone a lot more moderate and mm -hmm. i think the senate is really 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 conservative and then the governor yeah. sits above it all as the CEO. So honestly, if you don't get his permission or his blessing on things, I wonder what can pass and what can't. That's that's what I think. We'll see. I didn't really answer your question that well, but um, budget's not really in my hands. It wasn't enough. We put yeah. a whole bunch of money in savings. Even some very conservative people were just like, "What? Are, that's a little bit too much, even though yeah. people like to save. Because we're still starving out our, um, especially the uh, uh, state, the core services yeah my, my big belief is you better fund government at least the government that that helps other people out before anything so public education um dhs health care it, it's a no-brainer yeah but up there it's it's not a no-brainer <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just not it's you bang your yeah. animal you're like ah. <laughs> yeah um 
So what are some accomplishments that you're proud of that have happened at the state legislature since you're since you've been there? Well, there, obviously, uh, the during the walkout, that big old pay raise with a, a increase in GPT was huge. I'll yeah. never forget that year. That year was was historic. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> last year, I'd say, you know, I got one bill passed. It was a bill that allows um, if, if you have a cystic fibrosis you can self-medicate at schools no one knows about it but i passed that but um and i'm not it is what it is it's helpful but i think the the main thing i'm proud of is not the things that passed i think it's the things that we made sure didn't get to the floor um Mm -hmm. i uh we teamed up with a lot of those moderate republicans us democrats did and there's now 22 educators up there too instead of just two that's huge huge for me and we have unified in a bipartisan uh group it's continually growing uh we have to work on that because we don't want one side to think it's a democrat thing or one side to think it's republican we want it completely bipartisan that's yeah. not easy but we're working on it and um we fought real hard to make sure no voucher type bills got to the floor remember they have to have 51 votes that's not just yeah. for democrats to hear a bill that's for everybody mm-hmm. um, if you don't get 51 republican votes then they're not going to bring it to the floor so we had to fight 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 i think it was like 49 votes. we just fought 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 and they never got enough votes to get that heard through a, through a combination of reasons, but um, I was proud of that because we don't need to have that stuff in our state. Um, you're, it was also a, a bill to um, extend the tax credit scholarship cap. Uh, mm-hmm. We don't need that either. Tax credit scholarships need to go away too, honestly. Um, if I was governor, I would get rid of it today. But um, it just diverts more mo- money to uh, away from public funds, and that's just something I can't stand for. So really, it's more things I'm proud that didn't come up yeah. than things that passed, because honestly, we're the minority. We didn't pass a whole lot. Yeah. But we fought it. We fought the good fight and won some good battles for sure. All right, that's good. That's, that's really good to hear. <laughs> um, oh, for sure. I'm telling you, there's some good people in the House and the Senate. But I'm saying across the aisle, it's just become a more moderate place. Like we even saw a cola for retirees, a four percent one pass out of the House, mm-hmm. and then the Senate. And then the Senate didn't even hear it. So mm-hmm. that just goes to show you that we really wanted that as the House. That's everybody. And, mm-hmm. it, and it just died in the Senate. Okay. Um, would you like to talk about any bills that you'll be proposing within the next session? Yeah. See, the one really cool thing about this job is that the experience is the best teacher. So <clears throat> in my first year, uh, I actually did get a bill passed. It was a watered-down version of Lauren's Law, and that mm-hmm. was it. <clears throat> and then last year, obviously, I had three bills, but it ended up to be Lauren's Law only, and that died. This year, I've learned to not just throw bills out there. Now I have meetings with uh, um, committee chairs. Now I, I introduce <clears throat> my legislation well before it, it, it's even up on the floor. Like today, what I did today, even dressed like this, because you can do everything from home if you really want to. Um, I finalized all, all my bills, that, my education bills at least, and I'd love to go over a few of them with you. Um, <clears throat> number one, the biggest thing I'm pushing right now is what's called the Oklahoma Play-Based um, Learning Initiative. What that is is exactly what it sounds like. Uh, basically, it's a focus back on, on play as the most rigorous way to learn, especially in early childhood education. We've moved away from that with technology and things like yeah. that. Um, the reliance on tests and things, you know, kind of the, 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 the cu- curriculum is just kind of getting too directed. And anybody that knows anything knows that uh, play, especially in these early childhood education years, and I'm talking hands-on play, is the best way to learn. It, it's helpful for critical thinking, STEM, STEAM, arts, you name it. And it's starting to go away. Teachers aren't, they're doing it still. It's just a push from the top. And so yeah. what we're trying to do with this initiative is to allow teachers to feel free to use play the way they want to. I mean, the language all is all done. I set up a work group um, of mostly local educators, but some around the state as well. And uh, about 17 early childhood education, higher education experts, and some parents, and uh, some uh, even a pediatrician, and even the State Department of Education came too. So Mm -hmm. this thing actually probably has a good chance. It's bipartisan. I'm the author. I have Representative Sherry Conley down south of me. As the co-author and representative John Talley up north uh, in Stillwater, two Republicans that are on board with me as well. So that is looking pretty good. 
Um, I have a bunch of bills from last year I'm going to rerun. Um, one of them is um, something I've been trying to run for two years. It didn't die last year. It just didn't receive a hearing in committee. It's House Bill 1009. That is uh, a bill to bring back a $5,000 stipend for our national board certified teachers. The idea mm -hmm. is to keep the best and the brightest in our classrooms. And this, this, it was 5,000. It's a rest restoration. And when they did that, it dropped the numbers of NBCTs. Yeah. So now <clears throat> I want to bring it back, but only if you teach in, a, in, a, in an Oklahoma public school classroom. So you can't do it if you're an admin. Final app today, but I use my phone. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't even think about it, man. It was like at 1%. We were lucky to even get as far as we got. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um, we're in the Talking middle about, of uh, House Bill 1009, right? Yeah. Um, that is happening. Um, 11 Republican co-authors. That's big. If you look it up, it looks conservative because I worked so hard across the aisle. Mm -hmm. and, it, and I don't care if it's conservative or or, or whatever, but. It's a great bill. It needs to happen. And I've been told that it <clears throat> it may even show up in a line item uh, outside of a bill in the actual budget. So okay. <clears throat> if that happens, great. I want it to happen. I don't care if my name's on it, if it's not, blah, blah, blah. And um, <clears throat> I've got a whole bunch of other ones. Um, I am actually running a bill to allow uh, ads on school buses. Mm -hmm. it hadn't, it's, it's been done here before, but this is just a much better thought out bill the reason why i want to do that is because um it allows schools to do a little bit more with uh extra money from ads now it's going to be pretty restrictive obviously we're taking a look at what schools allow and don't allow mm -hmm. uh, um but with that money they can do what they want um yeah norman's got, has some pretty well thought out plans with it but um so there's that um i'm not going to run lauren's law again people have been asking me about that uh that would be three years in a row after the way it died last year, I'm going to probably have an interim study this interim. So if people can understand that it's not gay sex ed, like everybody was trying to beat it down last year, that it just has to do with uh, preventing sexual assault and domestic violence, all sorts of great things that it does. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll have an interim study on that. But other bills, without boring you, I'm trying to get through them real quick it's because they're you know kind of wordy. But um, uh, there will be one to allow, outside of education, um, to allow a uh, tax incentive for any uh, daycare that is going to stay open later. Mm -hmm. uh, that's to help families, working families. Uh, some people have criticized me on that one. They're like, well, then, sad that they have to have three and four jobs. That's what I had to, well, I can't control that, so I want to help where I can. Yeah. Um, also, outside of education, I'm going to do something kind of similar. It's, it's, I looked at other states, what they did uh, – Basically, my bills are either to help schools or to help prevent uh, adverse childhood experiences. And one of them was to not count child support um, in the, the, like the, the equation in order to get uh, child care from the state. Okay. It's, unfair. it's unfair to count that. That was my point. Um, and some others, I mean, I've got a whole bunch. I'm rerunning a bill that allows speech language pathologists and school psychologists they already get a five thousand dollar stipend but there's language in there that says if funds are available so a lot of times they don't know if they're going to get it or not and we are bleeding in that area with our schools like mm -hmm. school psychologists they can go make so much more money somewhere else yeah. and we need to make sure that they know this came from i have a ton of them in this district and basically they were like we need to know that that's coming every time so just delete that language we'll see if that happens um i have a bill that's going to prevent uh, the state board of education from sponsoring charter schools. That's uh, good. That's in response to some things that happen out there and out here in Norman as well. Uh, I, last year I couldn't get a hearing for it. This year it wasn't real popular with the higher ups. So we'll mm -hmm. see what happens to it. Um, and this year a lot of different. The main different thing is I am going to talk to the chairs of the of the different. Um, committees that way they're familiar with what i'm about to run or they can already give me their issues and i can fix things or not run things or rerun things or whatever i need to do to, to get ahead of the game on that so again experience is the best teacher and that's that's why i think i've become a little bit better because you don't know what you're doing at first like i got in a special election in 2017 
And I didn't even know where the bathrooms were. People thought I was a lobbyist or, or a pen. Because <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even have the little pen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like, no, I'm, I'm one of you. I promise. <laughs> so now it's different because, you know, I, I know what to do. I know how to do it. And we'll see if we can get some pretty decent legislation passed this time. All right, cool. Um, let's see here. So, uh, would you like to weigh in on the presidential race? Maybe even make an endorsement of a candidate? Um, I, I try to keep things pretty separate, federal from state, from city. Mm-hmm. I've gotten a little bit involved in city stuff. I've backed a few candidates, and one of them won out here uh, in my ward. He didn't even have an opponent. I was pretty excited about that. Um, uh, with presidential, I've always been a big Bernie person. That's how I got involved in politics in the first place. Um, I had started that way because I love the message of, of, you know, having no weak links, making sure everybody has a fair share. Um, I'm a, I'm a big Elizabeth Warren fan too, except she doesn't seem to have that same fire. If you know what I'm saying? I, I look, I look for real. I look for somebody to be real. Um, and also, uh, and I like the way Pete Buttigieg speaks, especially on the stage, but his experience is pretty like non-existent. But then again, I can't really hate the guy because uh, I didn't have an experience when I got elected. So well, this is president. Yeah. And also it is president of the United States that yeah. we have right now. So anybody could probably do it. But um, no, no endorsements. <laughs> <laughs> but just realize that I am a, a big Bernie guy. Always have been. I am in contact with his uh, um, Oklahoma folk here. I'm about to go see the uh, Norman office once they open it up, which would be pretty fun. Um I, I will help where I can with that because I'm still a huge believer in, in that type of thing. I just think I also think that he would have won if he would have got the nomination in 2016. So still a believer um, and just want to see that happen. And it's not even a secret. People are like, oh, so you're what are you just you're, you're for Bernie. I was like, well, yeah, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's when the, been the kind of the way it's been. Um, yeah. It was put on mailers last year against me to attack me. So just own it. Right. <laughs> 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 yeah. Like my opponent put it out there and said, he, he donated to Bernie five times. Little did they know it was like five bucks a month. Right. <laughs> salary, you know what I mean? So, uh, I don't know. I, I, I stay away from endorsements as far out, but if you know, I was going to pick somebody, obviously my boy Bernie. So. All right. That's good. All right. Last question. Uh, who is your favorite music artist? Mm-hmm. And if you don't have one, you can name four or five. Uh, no, it's good. I, I'm eclectic. I was raised by my dad, who was uh, really into classical music. So I like, uh, it sounds so boring, but Beethoven, but you know, that's just what I chill out to. But you want to just break it down like i'm just jamming alice in chains uh, nice okay yeah no i like grunge uh but especially alice in chains um if i'm in a you know, kind of different moods you know it's, it's just different i like i still like uh outcast um, okay uh but you know like honestly though a lot of classical music so like beethoven's seventh is mm-hmm. one of my favorites it's it's a song that i listened to before i went in for um in 2017 uh, I wasn't sure I was going to win that election, and so I listened to that to kind of calm myself down um, before I went to my my uh, election party or whatever it was. I had no idea I was going to win, none. So <laughs> you just go in there, and you work so hard, and you're just like, <clears throat> so I had to yeah. calm myself down, and then I found out I was you know, going to win, whatever. And so that's pretty much it, man. Um, I love I, I love the uh, like some French composers. I love the, the romantic era of music, period. Um, just kind of loud like I love when Beethoven was kind of start losing his hearing because it would be like dun, 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 dun. and that's about the exact uh, theme of me <laughs> dun, 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 dun. so yeah crescendos I'm a crescendo guy all right cool well that's all I have for today thank you so much for coming on you are the first Oklahoma State Representative to come on my show, so you have the honor of being that. Well, Greg, man, listen to this, Gregory. I've known you since day one. Yeah, um, since the first the time campaign. you were on. Yeah. Well, I'll think about it. it was Bernie campaign that got us all started. Uh, that's how I met Lauren, and and everybody's like, oh, so 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 you're a Bernie guy. <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 
that's literally what I am. <laughs> now I'm just yeah. trying to work to the best of my ability, though. Um, trying to get teachers to understand that his uh, uh, education plan is so above and beyond all the rest. Oh, yeah. So above, way beyond. And I also was kidding. This is funny. I'll, I'll put this on here. Um, <clears throat> I talked to his campaign, some of the members, and I was just joking, but I was like, Hey, listen, I'll give an endorsement if y'all, once you're president, will we'll pick me to take over for Betsy DeVos at the Department of Education. I said it with a straight face. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, uh, I was like, I'm, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm not that guy. I'm not going to, there's no, there's no quid pro quo here. <laughs> anyway, hey, it was my pleasure. Um, sorry, it's been one of those crazy nights, man. We we're trying to do laundry we just got back from uh, uh new mexico and it's just a big mess in here so and i've got my dog chilling here so here come annie <laughs> see there she is. <laughs> <laughs> she looks sleep oh well she only has one eye so there's yeah <laughs> hi <laughs> her name's annie she's good all right man well i uh, appreciate you having me on and um uh, I don't know. Some other people probably try to hop on here too. It's always Hopefully. fun to get our our, uh, our voices out there and our messages out there. So remember, uh, Oklahoma Play Based Learning Initiative. It wasn't my bill, but it was created by educators, higher education, K twelve, and I think it's needed. Another thing about that too, the biggest area of shortage in our schools in this teacher shortage area right now is early childhood education. So I'm looking at this as even as a piece to try to bring those teachers back to teach because they know that's how they want to teach and how they can teach. It's developmentally appropriate to play with, yeah. you know, the, those kids of that early childhood. So that's my plug for my bill. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks. Yeah, man. We'll talk to you later. Yeah. Bye.